Do the New Orleans Saints have to make changes to their secondary? And if they're going to get younger at the position, would TCU defensive back Mark Perry be a good option for them to discuss? Let's talk about that right here on the Straight Up Saints podcast. You're listening to the Straight Up Saints podcast. What is up, Houdat Nation? Welcome back inside another edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. I'm your host, Chris Rosvogel, and as always, we're brought to you by Scott Fickner, Injury Lawyers, and DraftKings Sportsbook. So as I mentioned at the top, the Saints might have to get younger in the secondary, and if they're going to do that, no better way to do that than look through the draft. And one of the draft prospects at the safety position that is definitely worth talking about is TCU defensive back Mark Perry, who we're going to bring on right here for the show. So first off, Mark, Hope all's going well with you. And and just tell me, how's this draft process been? I know it could be a little bit stressful for you guys, but how's it been treating you? Yeah, you know, it's been it's been a little long, but you know, it's definitely definitely paid off. Um, you know, just kind of kind of step in the journey. But it's been it's been fun to uh getting to know some of these guys that I'm training with and you know, just going through the process. So it's it's been cool. Yeah, absolutely. And you you had a really interesting career. You know, you're starting off at Colorado, then you go to to TCU and uh, not just individual success, but obviously team success with TCU. You guys were just a, a game away from being national champions, you know, two seasons prior. But for you, when you get so many snaps under your belt, uh, obviously there's that experience factor. But I'm curious, if, are you able to kind of maybe look back at what you've done at the college level and, and kind of assess uh, what you learned about yourself, the growth that you've made, certain strides that you've taken? And, and what do you kind of see from maybe where you started that freshman year to where you finished? Yeah, definitely, you know, just looking back and looking at my career as a whole, you definitely realize that, you know, it's a marathon, like it's not a it's not a sprint. So, you know, whenever guys get drafted in April, like you're not where you're going to be in five to ten years, like you're going to continue to take those steps towards where you want to go. So, you know, the draft, I think sometimes, you know, we get caught up in all the, you know, who's top ten right now and all this. But, you know, you can't really you're not really going to know anything till five, 10 years from now, you know, there's plenty of guys that we've seen in the past where they were fifth round guys or undrafted free agents and they end up being some of the best players in the league or vice versa. Like some guys that were the top coming out of college and, you know, didn't necessarily pan out. So, you know, I just think looking back at my career and then looking forward into, you know, getting into the NFL and being drafted, you know, I just kind of keep that perspective of, you know, it's a marathon, you know, you got to take step by step and, be able to continue to grow no matter no matter what's thrown at you so yeah and I, I think that's a great mentality to have and I'm, I'm you know to your point you talked about it's not where you start it's more, almost where you finish I mean, we can just look at this past Super Bowl you got two players on on the opposing team seventh round picks and Pacheco and Brock Purdy and obviously uh, they've mm-hmm. done great jobs for themselves so you talk about that mentality uh, I, I have to imagine as a safety especially in today's football where I think that you know all the rules kind of tend to side with the offense Kind yeah. of have to have the to have that chip on your shoulder, uh, and I'm curious for you. When, when I've seen your you know your film, I think I see an instinctual guy. I see a guy that really likes to attack downhill, which is definitely a key in today's NFL. What do you think's kind of been your calling card, if there is one, so far uh, in your career? What What do you mean by calling card? Like, what, what do you think's maybe you know? I'm sure there's a bunch of skill sets that you lean on. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Maybe that, that top thing that you kind of lean on in terms of that. That's what separates me from the rest of the bunch. Yeah, you know, I definitely think there's not a lot of guys out there that are that have my size with my speed. You know, obviously I wasn't invited to the combine to be able to show, you know, a lot of people. But I think once my pro day rolls around and Big 12 pro day, you know, it'll be on NFL Network. But, you know, I think once that rolls around and people are kind of able to see the, the numbers that I put up and things that I'm able to do, I think it'll open a lot of people's eyes. And, you know, for me, I like to hang my hat on that and pride myself in that because, you know, at the end of the day, I use that those things on the field to my advantage. Um, so, you know, just being able to stay a step ahead and even even not regarding physical traits, you know, just watching film, staying a step ahead of the game. You know, I'm a real cerebral guy. I like to, you know, prepare and make sure that I'm ready. So, you know, I really like to watch a lot of film and make sure that I'm prepared so I can just stay a step ahead, you know, and not have to rely on, you know, my God-given abilities. Yeah, and, and I'm curious, so you mentioned the pro day, and and look, I know obviously when you don't get invited to the combine, especially when it feels almost like a snub in your case, I'm sure that could be tough, but it seems like you've done a great job of just kind of thinking ahead instead of dwelling in the past. And for you, um, when you think about the pro day, I know there's such an emphasis on, on certain drills, like everyone cares about the 40 and the shuttle and, and all that type of stuff when it comes to the combine and pro days, 
Um, when, when you're talking about a safety where I feel like a lot of the game is about making sure you have great play recognition, how do you try to balance maybe not putting such an emphasis on like the track aspect of pro days and making sure you focus on football while also understanding like they do care about those numbers? Like, has that, does that mean you have a change in your workout regimen? Just how do you approach that? Yeah, so I mean, at least in my workout regimen, I'm working out here in Frisco, Texas at Sports Academy. Um, and, you know, I have I have more position work days than I have speed days. So, like, you know, obviously the 40 is a big part of the whole combine – or not combine, uh, pre-drive process. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is only a four-month, five-month period. Like, football still has to be played. So, you know, being able to still, you know, get tools in your tool belt and sharpen your sword um, – things that you're going to be doing on the field, you know, that's, I think that's more important than, you know, necessarily doing all this work towards one day. So. Yeah. And, and I think another cool aspect of the draft process, and this is kind of the starting point, which I, I love is, you know, obviously the, the, the bowl games they could have. And, and for your case, kind of being able to, to participate in the East West Shrine Bowl. Uh, a, what was that experience like? And, um, you know, B, what was it like just kind of being around different players, maybe the guys that you've, been opponents with guys you never met before what's that kind of uh that whole experience like for that week yeah the experience for me you know it was really positive i think i was able to go out there and you know do some things that open you know a lot of the important people's eyes and you know i got quite a bit of quite a bit of buzz coming out of that week um but you know i just kind of went into it not making it any more than what it had to be you know at the end of the day it was football like go out there communicate like as a safety you got to communicate got to run to the ball got to you know make sure you're making your different checks and stuff so I was just making sure I was doing the, the ordinary things you know extraordinarily well and um in in case of the Saints like uh my position coach that whole week was Saints safeties coach Matt Giordano so I was able to build a pretty good relationship with him throughout the week and just you know learn from him different things that he teaches his safeties down in New Orleans and what he expects from those guys. So it was a really productive week, not only on the field, but just getting to know, getting to know some of those coaches. And then obviously, like you said, different players that I've played against and, you know, just kind of building that relationship because you're going to be seeing these guys for years to come. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned the, the saints, um, you know, obviously when you look at the safety position, I think of, you know, what they got going on right now with a guy like Tyron Matthew. And I'm curious for you, um, I think I read somewhere maybe Troy Palomalu might have been one of those guys that you studied. If not, you know, feel free to correct me. But who were those guys at the safety position that, you know, you, you love to kind of just pop in the tape and admire their work? Yeah, you know, obviously everybody's watched Honey Badger. Like, he he's really one of the ones that has, you know, trailblazed the position. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of good uh, young guys in the league right now at the safety position. You know, you got guys like Xavier McKinney, Kyle Hamilton, um, you know, there, there's so many, there's so many good safeties in the league, but, um, even just looking at the saints, like, um, I played with Jordan Howden in high school, seven on seven. So when, he, when he got drafted to the saints last year, you know, that was big. So just being able to see how many good safeties there are in the league. And there's a lot of up and coming young guys as well, but, um, really like to watch Derwin, there's there's a whole lot of guys. I watch any any chance I see a body breakdown, I'm I'm watching it. So, yeah, and I, I love that those breakdowns are absolutely the best. They become you know, especially for just fans who, you know, are trying to get into more of the the film aspect of it. I think it's one of the coolest things. So I'm curious for you. You mentioned you know certain safeties. Um, it, this is just the way I've been seeing football lately with it becoming such a passing league. Does it almost feel like to you that safeties now are kind of becoming that ultimate chess piece on defense? Just like, you know, you look on offense and people will look at a guy like a Travis Kelsey or look at a guy like McCaffrey where you could kind of maneuver them wherever you want and find that mismatch. It kind of seems like safeties on the flip side are hopefully kind of leveling the playing field for you. Do you kind of see it that way? And if so, um, you know, what, what kind of pride do you take in being able to play that type of game changing position? Yeah, you know, I think safety is most definitely one of those positions that's kind of a jack of all trade. You know, depending on who you're playing that week, you know, you might slide them down into the box and be more of a be more of a run fill in the run fits. Um, you know, if you have a tight end that's really obviously like Travis Kelsey or George Kittle, you know, you can have them roll down and man up on the tight end, take away that mismatch because you know a lot of those tight ends might either try to big body or run past a linebacker. Um, you know, you, you can do a lot of things with safety. You can blitz them. You, so, you know, for me, I take that pride in trying to be able to do all those little things that come with the position well. And, 
you know, for me in college, I didn't play in a defense that was very, you know, it's not running the league. We ran a base three three five. So, you know, a lot of the things that I was doing is going to be a whole new playing field for me once I get to the league. And I'm looking forward to, you know, just learning the little things when it comes to whatever defense that I'm putting in. Yeah, so, you know, I know I mentioned at the top asking you about this draft process and how whether or not it could be stressful or a lot going on. So I'm curious for you, you know, going away from the football side of things, if you do have that free time to kind of unwind and just relax a little bit, uh, what are kind of those things that are able, you know, to kind of take that stress off for you during a, a time like this? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I got a lot more time, you know, obviously not having school and stuff after, so, but, you know, I really, I play video games, you know, I'm, I'm, quite a I'm bit I'm in the clothes fashion different stuff like that you know I'm working on my own stuff so just kind of spend my time off the field doing a lot of those things but you know obviously a lot of the time right now is football so yeah absolutely so I, I want to ask you you know you obviously we talked about TCU before um you know for you is there a fond memory that you're going to look back on and I know now you're getting into this new chapter so before you get into this new chapter in the NFL if you had to pick one moment to take with you from your time at TCU, what, what would it be? Uh, definitely that whole 22 season, you know, it was, it was special. And I think that season really, you know, kind of defines not who I am, but it, it resonates with me because, you know, that whole year we were underdogs and nobody expected us to win most of the games we won. Nobody expected us to go as far as we did. And I think that's kind of reflective of, you know, how my career is kind of going. You know, nobody expected me to be a starting safety at two different Power Five universities playing a national championship. So I just kind of carry that chip on my shoulder with me. And, you know, we had this we had this saying at TCU that um, underdogs are hungry dogs and hungry dogs run faster. So I've just kind of always taken that with me, you know, whether it was while I was at TCU or beyond. So I think that season was definitely special and it'll definitely, um, you know, stay with me forever. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. So my last question for you, Mark, before I let you go, um, if you had to do kind of like an elevator pitch to an NFL team as to why they should draft you this April, what would it kind of be for you? You know, I think I'm a, I think I'm a selfless guy that's going to do whatever the team needs me to do to win. Um, I'm a guy that's willing to do the dirty work, you know, whatever I'm asked to do, that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, have no off the field issues, always going to be accountable on time, prepared. Um, you're getting a competitor on the field, a guy that's going to make sure that he's not only holding himself accountable, but raising the standard above him, you know, holding teammates accountable and just being himself, you know, having fun. At the end of the day, we play a game, a high energy game, and I'm going to bring I'm going to bring that energy to practice. I'm going to bring that energy in the building and you know on game days so yeah so mark man thank you so much for for hopping on the pod man i absolutely appreciate it it's been a pleasure watching you at the college level and i wish you all the best as you get ready for the nfl man yes sir i appreciate it absolutely once again that was mark perry from tcu uh, and we'll see what happens with this draft obviously for the saints i think that this is a, an imperative time for them at the safety position and they got to get younger. I think this is a, a fact of a matter. This isn't an opinion thing for me. I think they absolutely have to get younger at the safety position. And it's because you're looking at what you got in the two starters. They're not getting any younger. The contract situation is less than certain past the 2024 season. So without a doubt, it doesn't necessarily have to be Mark Perry. Mark Perry is an intriguing option. Uh, and he talked about being able to learn from the Saints uh, secondary already. But they got to get younger. And I can't stress that enough for this team. Looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BOOT. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code BOOT. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. So when I look at the numbers for the Saints secondary, these are the two that kind of stick out to me. The, the age factor is there. Look, Marcus May... 
at this point, it, it's not just age, but he's not getting any younger, obviously. You know, you look at him, you bring him over from the Jets. He's already at 30 years old. So he's on the wrong side of the coin for a safety. Now, safeties can play at a, at a long t- for a long time. I get that. But with the way May's going, he's missed time due to injury, also missed time due to suspension. Um, and look, with one year left on the deal, he could be a cap casualty, could be a pay cut option. Uh, either way, I don't think you keep him at what you got him at right now. You've only gotten 17 games out of him in the last two years. That's not good enough. And again, he was supposed to replace Marcus Williams. So that that's not that's not a great option at one safety. At the other safety, I'm going to be honest. I think Tyron Matthews is still playing at a really good level. It, it doesn't matter if you check the metrics to, as the stats, you check the pro football focus metrics, whatever metric you want to check. I still think just the eye test alone shows you he's a good football player. But he's going to be 33 in a year from now when his contract ends. Just like Marcus May, his contracts are going to expire after the next season. So I'm worried more so about age and the contract situation. Contract situation for Marcus May, I'm not too worried about because I would just move on from him uh, as a whole. But you got to get younger at the safety position. Now, you do have one safety on the roster who does fit that younger uh, department. And that guy who checks off that box is Jordan Howden, who Mark Perry mentioned before as getting to know him at a younger age. I think Jordan Howden showed moments where he flashed his potential. And Jordan Howden is a guy who had a lot of experience at Minnesota. Reps on top of reps on top of reps. So you're not worried about that aspect. And I think that's a good thing. But you got to get another guy in there. You can't just rely on those two old safeties in May and Matthew and then hope Jordan Howden takes the next jump. You got to get another guy in there. Now, maybe it's bringing back Jonathan Abram, who finished the year on a strong note. Maybe. But that's not a good enough option. You got to bring in some fresh talent, some young talent. Because for me, if the Saints are going to be a good team next year, I know we all talk about Derek Carr and what he's got to do better and what Clint Kubiak can fix offensively, and I understand that, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. The defense needs to play at a level that is swarming, that is forcing turnovers, just like they did this past season. But I think the secondary has got to get a little better, especially because I don't anticipate the D-line just being able to turn it on a dime. You know, like I think this Saints defensive line needs to be just it needs an influx of talent all around. Whereas the Saints secondary, I really like the cornerbacks. I still think Tyron Matthew will give you one more really good year of football. I need another guy at that safety spot that can be a turnover machine that can make those big plays. So, you know, we talk about D-line. We talk about O-line. We talk about receiver. Talk about quarterback. Do not sleep on the safety position. The Saints have to get better this offseason at that one. We'll see what's going to happen. But there's a lot of young options in this draft that I like at the safety position. Uh, You know, Mark Perry being one of them. Uh, and definitely gr- glad that he was able to hop on the on the show. And that's a guy that, look, that's not an early pick so that you can use a later asset on. And he's got a lot of reps, similar to Jordan Howden. Got five years worth of reps. You know, got better as his career went on. And like I said, you could see the instincts there. But there's other ones out there. Evan Williams from Oregon's an interesting option. Uh, Cole Bishop from Utah just jumps off the screen when you're watching him. Uh, so we'll see. Another one that I think is going to be funny is if you do a little bit of reunion In terms of the safety position, uh, you know, Jordan Howden's former running mate at Minnesota, he's one of the top safeties in this draft. So maybe you go all Minnesota defensive backs. Who the hell knows? We'll see what happens. But either way, I do think the Saints got to get a safety in there at some point this offseason. I anticipate that they will. And we'll see how this all breaks down. But that's going to wrap it up, guys, for this edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. Uh, If you like the interview we had at the beginning, you want to see more draft stuff, let me know. I'll make sure I get more prospects on. Uh, We'll mix up the positions too, running back, D-line, whatever it may be, we'll go through them. Particular positions I think the Saints need to address. Uh, Now, I I have no problem addressing any position because the Saints can get better all across the board. Uh, But I'll definitely focus on needs because who knows, maybe you know one day they're just a prospect, the next day they're wearing the black and gold. So we'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below if you want more content like this. Uh, And let me know what you think about the safety position. Do the Saints got to get younger, faster, whatever, at that spot? I think it's a no-brainer, but I'm curious to know what the Saints fans have to think so make sure you guys subscribe to boot crew media's youtube page for more content like this in the future from the straight up saints podcast the destination for the Houdat nation